Amen. Hey, you don't need to make it, man. Amen. <laughs> All right, let's get busy. Amen. Let's lift up the Lord today. Amen. One, one, one. Y'all at home, join in with us. Amen. Because I, I think we're on Facebook Live, too. So hopefully it'll uh, play better than it did last week.
this morning in Psalm 91. Mm -hmm. It reads as follows. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowl and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid of terror by night, nor the arrow that fly by day, nor for the pestilence that walk in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the arrow, the young lion and the dragon, shalt thou trample on their feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I'll deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. Amen. Amen.
him, and then I'll come back with the message.
feeling guilty of wasting time, overspending time, misappropriating time, and just not handling time properly. Let me ask you, who in your life is complaining about time? Just having more time and quality time with you. Just making sure that they have that intimate time that they once had. Possibly it might be your husband or your wife, your children, your friends, your employers, your co-workers. Somebody might be absolutely upset about the time that you used to have that you don't have now. And one of the most precious things that you and I should value and that we have on this earth is time because it's very short. Amen. And so it has to be carried out in the right manner mm -hmm. and in the right way. Amen. And people might say, well, um, I've got this going on, I've got that going on, I'm busy with this, busy with that, busy with the other. But the question is, are you really busy doing the right thing? Amen. And doing the thing that really has the true quality that's necessary to build a proper, good, loving, lasting, intimate relationship with loved ones and Amen. with people. And a lot of times these relationships get strained. And oftentimes they get strained because the most important part uh, that we ought to focus on and the main thing that we ought to spend our time with is God. Amen. And so Amen. could it really truly be possible that God is saying the same thing that your wife is saying, the same thing that your husband is saying, your child, or anybody else is saying is that really I want to have more time I want you to spend more time with me. And that's very needed because the further we get along in this life, the more we're going to need to get that time with God. Amen. The more we're going to have to receive the things that God uh, has uh, to give to us. Mm -hmm. And so there are those who, although they're not necessarily going to be doing things sinful, just not really doing the things that they ought to be in their proper priority Amen. and in the right way. And so what you and I have to remember and never forget is that absolute, total, valuable, quality time with God. Not just time and not just some scraps, but real good, intimate time with God. Amen. How would you like somebody to just take and uh, use the best part or the most important part and just throw you some scraps? Mm -hmm. Just give you some leftovers? Well, sometimes that's what we give to God. And that's what we give to others. Just some scrap, just here, just what's left over, just a little bit and not really of any value at all. It can be a very valuable thing to have intimate relationships uh, with loved ones, but most importantly, having that intimate, close relationship with God that so many people have thought is not important, at least it's not as important as it used to be. And I want to tell you that in these times now, it's very important Amen. that you recognize and understand how quality time with God is really important because Satan's on a rampage, doing all kinds of things. All kinds of stuff demands your attention. All kinds of busy work and all kinds of things that really draw you away from God. And so it's where we spend that time, like a fireside, like a fireplace with God. It's where we get everything that we need from God. That close time where we can hear, where we can feel God's presence, where we can be uh, in the face of God and really carry out the will of God. So many people don't execute the will of God properly because they never spend time in the presence of God. I want to tell you that any relationship is fueled by the fire of communication. The time that you spend quietly, the time that you spend talking and listening, those are the most important things. You can get wrapped up in a whole lot of doing this and doing that and doing the other, all kind of mundane things and drift apart and drift away and the next thing you know is somebody you feel like you never even knew because you never got that time to spend close intimate connection with them. And so really it's important that we spend the time hearing, spend the time talking, constantly encoding and decoding, communicating over and over and over again. That's what builds a relationship, finding out what's on your mind. You know what's on my mind. Um, getting a meeting of the minds, gaining understanding, finding out what the truth is. A whole lot of relationships go south because of a misunderstanding. Amen. Well, that can happen even spiritually with God. Amen. A lot of times people have drifted, gotten into all kinds of things, uh, even gotten upset with God, drifted into other things, listening to other things, indulging in other things because of a misunderstanding with God about his instruction and about his will, about his character and about his nature. And there are people right now that uh, have gone miles and miles and miles away from the will of God and spending time indulging with other things, listening to other things, talking with other things, depending on other things because of not spending that quality time with God. 
And so what I want to deal with in this message is something that's extremely important. I want to give you a warning right up front. Some of this may be kind of offensive uh, to where you might be right now, but I can tell you if you'll listen, take heart, take heed to what the Holy Spirit is saying to you, you can get it right from right where you are. God always wants to reconnect and restore that proper relationship with you. No matter how far you've gone, no matter what you're involved in, God is ready to hear. God is ready to deal with whatever it is that you've gotten yourself in. And so what I want to deal with in this message is uh, remembering the fire. That is remembering the fire, the way things used to be. And that's going to get clearer as we go on, but keep in mind that when in the Bible, uh, God talks about uh, fire where God is concerned and always looks at God's uh, control, his sovereignty, his presence, uh, his guidance, his leading, his protection, but also his judgment. And so uh, God looks at the imagery of fire being all those things. And it's very important that you and I don't forget and don't allow it to be blown out because it really can start to diminish over a period of time. At one time it kindled, at one time it was hot, at one time it was burning, but you better believe that with all the things that life throws at you and with all the opportunities to get away from God, it can really start to uh, go away. And so there are those who really had a certain relationship with God at one time, a certain fellowship with God at one time, and uh, things were moving along a certain way, but then all of a sudden something happened, uh, something took place, and that fire started to go out. And this is no time for your fire to go out. Amen. This is your time to have a burning fire in your life, uh, a relationship with God like it really needs to be even better than before. Amen. Uh, because there are so many things that can dampen it. There are so many things that can smother it, and choke you almost half to death. And so it's very important uh, that you and I make sure that we remember from whence we came from. Remember where things started because God has not changed and God will not change. He remains the same. All kinds of other things change and we might fluctuate, but God always remains the same. And this is how all kinds of other relationships, all kinds of other things will be set in order. Keep in mind that it's always God first and foremost and all kinds of other things first and foremost. And people are running to brick walls. And people are hitting dead ends trying to make this work, make that work, fix this, fix that, fix him, fix her. But really what needs to happen is our relationship needs to get fixed. And God is over top of us saying, you know what, this relationship needs to get fixed. You and I need to reconnect. You and I need to rebuild. And there are people that even want to shake people saying, well, why don't you listen? And why don't you hear? Well, the question is, have you listened to the right thing? Have you heard from God? And uh, that will affect all kinds of other communication uh, that you have that God would ordain in your life and he wants to be a certain way. Keep in mind that God is absolute sovereign, he's absolute in total control, and he wants the fullness of you and I, total heart commitment from you and I, for him to give his total heart to us. You draw an eye to God, he'll draw an eye to you. It's as plain and simple as that. Amen. Spending time in the presence of God, you're going to get the instruction of God, the will of God, understand the character of God, and listen, you hang around something long enough, you're going to wind up thinking like it, talking like it, listening to it, you're acting like it. And so there's going to be a connection. That's what God wants. He doesn't necessarily want to just dominate your life totally so he can fill up himself. No, he wants to infuse his character inside of your life. Listen, just totally enrapture you with his love. Just pour out himself on you and in you so you can do the things. Uh, that need to be done uh, on this earth for this time and not just now but for eternity and so um, this message is titled remembering the fire and it has rekindling that fire that is getting it back where it ought to be and that is putting the flame back in our lives because a lot of people are walking around uh, in a damp depressed state uh, there have been storms it's, I mean, it's always raining but I can tell you right now that the sun is always shining in your heart God is the light that always lives. He's the everlasting light. And if you and I have the Lord Jesus Christ in our lives, we've got that light burning at all times. And so it's important that in whatever circumstance you're in, whatever situation you've got, you've got the light of the Lord living on the inside of you that can always burn. And that'll affect other people. It'll affect you first, and it'll shine all over others. And so it's very important that nothing blows that out. Now, keep in mind that there are certain things 
in our lives that need to be blown out. And so if God really has a cause to disconnect with this and with that and the other, keep it that way. Don't you light it back up? And so you and I have to make sure that we keep our relationship with God totally lit. I mean, absolutely burning like it ought to be burning. So I'd like you to take your Bible and uh, go to Deuteronomy chapter 4. I'm looking at two passages of Scripture, uh, one in uh, Deuteronomy and the other. I'll get to in a minute, but what you're going to see here in chapter 4 is Moses. Now, here's a man who knew a lot about being in the presence of God and uh, getting instruction from God. And uh, if you remember back in uh, Exodus, uh, he was called by God to uh, deliver the people of Israel because God had an intense affection to deliver them from bondage. And so in chapter 3 of Exodus, you see the call of Moses. And that call really was by a burning bush. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Bible makes it clear that the angel appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of that bush. And uh, he looked and behold, the bush burned with fire and the bush was not concerned. Amen. And through that, God gave Moses what his will was. His will was that he wanted uh, Israel delivered. And he had seen their affliction, which where they were in in Egypt and all the taskmasters they were under and all the sorrows and all the pain that they had. And God desired was to come down and deliver them uh, out of the hand of the Egyptians, and He had worked through Moses in order to do it. And so He called them. Uh, he called him to uh, deliver uh, the Israelites and bring them over into the land of Canaan that would be flowing with milk and honey. And so God commissioned uh, Moses uh, through that uh, burning bush, and that's where uh, He really got in the presence of God and received the will of God. And uh, He even questioned Himself. And he even questioned what it is he should say, and God made it clear to him, you just tell him, I am the I am. And that's it. It's as plain and simple as that. And so through that burning bush, uh, Moses got to know what God's will was. He got to share the heart of God. He got the commission of God. Uh, he got the absolute sovereignty of God and the absolute direction of God and all of that. And he went on obediently to do the things that uh, he was called to do. And what you see is in Exodus, uh, the theme basically is the deliverance from Egypt and the covenant at Sinai and the construction of the tabernacle. And then in Leviticus, you see uh, basically what true worship is supposed to be like and true holiness is supposed to be like and maintaining those right relationships between God and man. And then you go on in Numbers, that focuses primarily on uh, getting to the promised land and the journey it takes toward it. But then there's a shift that took place. You think that that would go smooth, starting from the burning bush and then getting delivered coming through a Red Sea on dry land and getting over to the other side thing, just a shoe in. But no, here comes disobedience and doubt. Uh, they refuse to go in. Here comes fear and all those things set in and stuff like that. And so in Numbers, basically what you have is a bunch of wandering, wandering around in the wilderness. And something that really took an 11-day trip really took 40 years, just wandering around all around all over again because of fear and doubt uh, against God. And then now, uh, here, Deuteronomy, after all that old group died off and things like that, here what you've got now is basically uh, a recount, a recall, a renewal, and a reinstitution of God's law. Because now here you've got the uh, latter part about to go into the promised land. And so Moses is at his last days and he's given an instruction to the people of Israel. Basically, you can sum it up in one word. The book of Deuteronomy simply means to remember. Just really make sure you recount what it is that God has set forth, what it is that God has put in place, what it is that God requires, what it is he demands. So he takes it, he sums it all up Amen. and he puts it all in a package. And he, listen, he reveals to them what God's holiness is all about, what true worship is all about, what God's instruction is all about, what God's presence is all about, the importance of holiness and also the importance of not drifting over into other things. Not like you did before, because all that stuff can't go into the promised land. All that stuff can't go into where you're going, because basically what God is making clear is that, listen, you're going into somewhere that you didn't build. This was here before you got there. Listen, this is a land flowing with milk and honey. I set it up. I made it that way. And so when you get in there, make sure that you don't forget where you came from. Amen. Don't forget what I did before. Don't forget how I brought you out of bondage. Don't forget how I delivered you from all that oppressive stuff. Don't forget how I fed you. Don't forget also the things that happened way back then when you drifted over into idol worship and things like that. None of that stuff really can come into the promised land. And so what you have is Moses really giving a firm declaration before these go in, before uh, even Joshua carried them over, 
You've got really an absolute recount of the things of God, the holiness of God, the presence of God, the worship of God, and all the things that revolve around a right relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And so uh, look at what Moses says here. Look at what happens in uh, chapter 4, and uh, look at verse 1. The Bible says, Now therefore hearken, O Israel, that is, listen, unto the statutes and the judgments which I teach you, for I do for to do them, that ye may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. You shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall you diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. Your eyes have seen what the Lord did because of Baal Peor. And that was all kind of stuff that uh, a lot of Israel had done as far as worshiping Baal, the God of fertility, and the land of Peor. There was a shrine that was totally dedicated to idol worship. And so they drifted over into that and got uh, their hands dirty and their hearts dirty with all that kind of stuff like that. And so what Moses is doing is he's warning them about what happened back there. I mean, they yeah. were struck and people's heads got cut off and all that kind of stuff. About 24,000 of them came up under the judgment of God as a result of getting in this shrine and worshiping an idol. It's a dangerous thing to get away from God and start worshiping a bunch of idols and things like that. Basically, as far as Baal is concerned, start to worship anything that presents itself as a production system. And so when you talk about idol worship, the core of that is to look to something else, the presence of something else and dependency on something else other than God for to be sustained with. God hates that. Right. And God will judge that. And so what he makes clear to them is, listen, at this curve of change, remember how that happened. Because you're going to get a lot of temptation to do it when you go forward. They're doing that stuff. You're going to have to overcome that stuff. So the same thing that happened back then can happen right now. So I want to make a clear warning about that. And keep in mind uh, that Israel is at an absolute transition point now. It's a hard transition from the former, from way back there in Egypt and in the middle of those 40 years in the wilderness to going into Canaan. That time, is a, listen, is a very critical time. Yes, you may have learned how to deal with the pain. You may have learned how to deal with the suffering and all kinds of trauma and all kinds of trouble and things like that. But the question is, really, are you prepared for the prosperity? A lot of people have survived the pain, but the biggest question is, can you survive the prosperity? Because that same devil that dealt with you in bondage, that dealt with you in pain, that dealt with you even in your rebellion, is waiting for you at the curve of prosperity. He's waiting right there to get you involved in a whole lot of other things, basically to get you away from the presence of God. Listen, Satan is always desiring to get you wrapped up in him. Something that's not like God. And get you away from the will of God. And get you into the presence of the devil. And get you involved in all kinds of other gods. And so that's the reason why Moses is giving this strong warning. Which is the same warning. Keep this in mind. The same warning that you and I have to have now. Before we go into a promise of God. Before we go into a blessing of God, before we go into the favor of God, listen, we've had all that bondage, all that pain, all that struggle, we've adapted to that, we've got used to dealing with God with that, we've even had some kind of chastisement, we've had all kinds of judgment, all kinds of things are happening, but right now, possibly your biggest test could be ahead of you, is how you're going to really maintain your life in the presence of God, even in times of favor, even in times of prosperity, it's a very critical thing. That you and I make sure we maintain our relationship, our fellowship, our time with God, even when things are going well. And God knows that because God knows the heart of man. God knows that because he knows the tendencies of man. And so therefore, he'll cause you, watch this, to remember all the things that took place before. All his presence, all his guidance, all his protection, as well as his judgment. He'll package that, he'll put it right in front of you before you go in as a warning really to not indulge in other things. And so uh, 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 Moses warns him of that. Look what he says further in verse 3. He says, The Lord thy God hath destroyed them from among you. But ye, watch this, but ye that did cleave unto the Lord your God are alive every one of you this day. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that ye should do so in the land whither you go to possess it. So all the statutes and the judgments and the things and the laws and the instructions that you learned before, listen, you learned them back then, you heard them back then, Moses taught them back then, you're going to have to take them up now. Although you were bit disobedient to them back then, and a lot of things you saw your forefathers do, listen, don't repeat that stuff. Amen. Don't carry it in where you're going. You're going in to possess the land, but you don't carry that junk. Amen. Don't carry that baggage. Look at what he says in verse 6. He says, keep therefore, that means hold them, therefore, and do them. Not just hear them, but just do it. 
For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall, listen, which shall hear all these statues and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people, which is one of the greatest names you'll ever get. Amen. No matter what kind of title, no matter what kind of position, no matter what kind of favor, no matter money, material thing, really doesn't matter. Listen, you want to be known as a wise and understanding person Amen. as far as the will of God is concerned. So the biggest thing that you and I have to carry over into prosperity, and catch this very carefully, the main thing that you and I have to carry into any kind of favor, into any kind of curve of a blessed change is the wisdom that we got from the time that we came out of. Amen. There's always something that God had for you to learn when you came out. Amen. There's always something that God was trying to teach you where you were, whether it was bondage or whatever the case may be, whether it was your rebellion or simply, listen, God taught you something. And if you listen, you learn something and gain wisdom. That is solutions about how to deal with certain things God's way. And at the same time, listen, you gain certain things where God gave you as far as understanding is concerned. So you've got to understand about God. You've got to understand about yourself. You've got to understand about Satan. you got to understand it. This is, listen, this is the main ingredient. This is the main thing that you and I have to pack and take into prosperity. Amen. All your intellect and all your other things and all that kind of stuff that's real heavy really doesn't matter one bit. It doesn't even matter how much you feel, how you feel. It's not about you feeling good. It's more about, really, the wisdom that you got, keeping that, remembering that, that understanding that you got about God, the way you understand about yourself, and the sensitivity that you got about God, the, sense, listen, the spiritual sensitivity that you got. Listen, taking that into times of prosperity. That's what he's making clear. He says, watch this in verse 7. For what nation is there so great, who hath God so nigh unto them, as the Lord our God is in all these things that we call upon him for. And what nation is there so great that have statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law which I set before you this day? And so basically what Moses is making clear is this, and that although all that stuff uh, in the land of Canaan where you're going is going to look mighty big, it's going to look mighty powerful, and it's nothing compared to God. Amen. And that's the reason why so many people get tempted to indulge in so many other things in times of prosperity because they want stuff they never had. It looks real big. It looks real wide. It seems like it's prosperous. But listen, it's nothing compared to the wisdom that God gives. Amen. It's Amen. nothing compared to the teaching and the learning and the experience that you've had with God. Now, catch this very carefully. I want you to understand this. There's no amount of money. There's no person. There's no place. There's no thing that's more valuable to you in your life than the presence of God. Amen. And in the Amen. time you spend with God, listen, don't let a thing, don't let a person, don't let a place, no matter what it is, even if it is a blessing, take the place of the time that you spend with God. Amen. This is the reason why so many of us make so many mistakes with God, with our loved ones, with things that's most important is because so many things, type, listen, take top priority and get bigger in our lives more so than the presence of God. You and I ought to make sure constantly that we make room and time to get God's wisdom, get God's understanding, get the truth, even if God's got to remind us of things over and over again. Never think that you've got it. The moment you think you've got it, that's the point you're going to lose it. Amen. So the moment you listen, get before God like a child and say, God, remind me. God, keep me. As a matter of fact, the more you get, the more on your knees you ought to get. Yeah. The more you accumulate, the more you ought to get before God, thanking God, Amen. remembering God, remembering what he did, remembering the way things used to be. Don't forget about how you came out. Don't forget about where you were. Don't forget about what happened before when you slipped and stumbled and messed up and got chastised. Listen, there are certain things you ought not want to go back to. Amen. There are certain things you ought not want to return to. And so when you remember what it is that God did, remember how God brought you out, remember how all those years of pain and suffering and drugs and trauma and all those kind of things like listen that ought to really set your focus on to maintaining a right relationship with God Amen. right daily focus and time that ought to be spent with God so you don't drift into other things Amen. now look at what it says in verse 9 and uh, Moses is really really driving home the importance of continuing to listen to God because uh, it gets to the point where even as you move forward in things in life, is somehow God's voice just kind of turns down. Sometimes we kind of turn the volume down on God's voice, and a lot of things turn up. And so uh, Moses is making it clear to them how important it is to keep God top priority. Look at what he says in verse 9. He says, now watch this, only take heed to thyself. Now he's going to tell them just what to do. He doesn't leave them hanging. 
Uh, he tells them not just what not to do, he tells them what to do. He says, only take heed to thyself. That means watch yourself. Uh, behave yourself. Listen, make sure you keep yourself in check. And, and people do a lot of good job of keeping others in check, but keep yourself in check. Yeah. Making sure your heart is right. Making sure you're not drifting. Making sure you're doing the right thing. Making sure your mind is focused. And one of the main things that you and I need to always do is make sure you're focused. Focus on what? Focus on God. Amen. First and foremost. You might be looking at a lot of things, but make sure you're focused totally on God. That is, your heart is totally, absolutely centered, directly dead center on God. Amen. And you're not drifting to the left or to the right, and that's what he's saying. Take heed to thyself. That is, watch yourself. Amen. Make sure you do it. Listen, an inner examination of yourself. And that's done by, really, again, obtaining the wisdom of God, remembering the laws and statutes of God, which will read you. If you want to do an examination, listen, the doctor can't search where this word can search. So if you really want to do a heart check, a real gut check, a real inner check about your real inner self and your motives and where you ought to be and where you should be, listen, you open up this word and you look at God's statues, you look at his judgments, you look at his command, and let it just dry right on through you and scan you. Amen. And you'll see a whole lot of things. Listen, God shows you those things, not to kill you, but he shows you those things for you to get it right. So each and every single one of us, every single day in the presence of God, are to make sure that one of the main things that we do in his presence is to really get a checkup. Amen. A constant daily checkup. Not this once a year stuff you do with your body, but really a checkup that we do with God each and every single day. And so Amen. Moses said, listen, Amen. only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligent. That is, keep busy in your heart. Making sure you're not being slowful or lazy or backing up or slacking up because that's a very important thing because that's a dangerous thing is that when you get complacent or get settled, you stop working. Yeah. And there are so many people who have worked for God and done things for God and all of a sudden it just cooled off, you know. Satan just gives you all kind of activities. You give yourself some activities and all of a sudden it just kind of dies down. You say, well, I got it. No, listen, he says keep diligent. Amen. Keep your soul diligent, busy. Not necessarily doing a whole lot of uh, certain things, but listen, doing godly things. And let me tell you what's going to happen when you get in the presence of God. Listen, take heed to yourself. Let God check yourself. Let God check you out. Show you what needs to be done and what's going to happen. And listen, you're going to get busy with the things of God because in the presence of God, you're going to get the will of God. Amen. You're going to get direction. Listen, you're going to get the instructions from God. Listen, you're never going to leave God's presence without getting some kind of instruction to be Amen. obeyed. Amen. You're never going to get in God's presence and God don't give you some kind of direction. Amen. Because he's, listen, there's something he wants you to do. There's an assignment you have to complete. There's a law you have to obey. And on the other side of that law is going to become a blessing. Amen. It's going to be a blessing for you. It's going to be a blessing for others. And God is always in the blessing business. Amen. And so there's never going to be a time where God's not talking. Mm. There's never going to be a time where God is going to feel like talking. He's not like us. There's never going to be a time where God is oh, I don't know, I feel like talking right now. I got nothing to say right now. All, God always got something to say. The question is, are we always ready to obey? Mm. That, listen, the question is, are we always ready to listen, get in his presence, and do what it is that he said? Now, keep in mind that some of these instructions might be very difficult ones. Yeah. But listen, by the grace of God, you and I can carry out those things, and that's what keeps us listening, yeah. taking heed to ourselves, and at the same time, executing God's will and keeping yeah. our souls diligent. Listen, Moses is saying, this is what's going to keep you where you're going. Amen. This is what will sustain you where you were. This is how you got out. And listen, this is the same thing and the main thing that's going to keep you when you get into prosperity. So keep this in mind. When prosperity is coming, when favor is coming, when blessing is coming, taking heed is very important. Being in the presence of God is very important. Remembering God is very important. And staying busy is important. Busy with the things of God is very important because the moment you lack, the moment you slack, Satan drives in and does all his damage. Right. And so yeah. Paul, uh, Moses rather, makes it very clear what needs to take place. He says, keep thy soul diligent. Now he's about to say what's going to happen because somebody might take this for a joke or take this for granted and say, well, you know, well, uh, I'll do it, but I'll do it just a little bit. It doesn't really take all that. I'll do it, but I'll do it tomorrow. And I'm going to tell you right now, it is a very, very deadly dangerous, poisonous thing to delay the presence of God. Amen. To Amen. postpone the presence of God. Satan will give you all kinds of things to cause you to postpone that time that you spend in God's presence. Well, I'll get around to praying tomorrow. Or, you know, I'll catch up on my prayer life and my reading and my time and fellowship with God on Friday. Or I'll just kind of 
kind of package it all into Sunday. Well, number one, how you think you're going to get to Friday or Sunday? Amen. And then Amen. there's all kinds of attacks. I'm going to tell you, Satan don't let up his attack from Sunday to Sunday. I'm sure many people can attest to that. And so if you put all your time in the presence of God and just the time you spend in church, listen, you're living in defeat. Amen. Because Satan's got something for you Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, all the way down. Matter of fact, he's going to try to get you not to get back on Sunday. He's going to try everything he can to get you not to get in God's presence. So listen, you and I can't take for granted the privilege that we have to spend time in the presence of God anytime. Amen. And all the time that we need to spend. I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about having your heart totally centered on God and spend that quality time with God that's needed to get what it is that's needed to deal with the devil that just won't stop. Amen. And so uh, he makes it real clear. He says, watch this. It's very important that you take heed. Very important that you keep thy soul diligent. Look at what Moses says. He says, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. But teach them thy sons and thy son's sons. He's saying, keep it in your heart. Make sure you, listen, not only keep it for yourself, but teach it to somebody else. Now remember that the instruction that you get from God is not just for you, but for somebody else. Listen, Amen. the reason why he says it for thy son, thy son's son, because the things you get from God is going to pass down. Amen. It's going to have a, listen, it's going to have an effect on others. So listen, can you think about a time in your life where you got something from God and you pass on to somebody else and they pass on to somebody else? Does it cause a ripple effect? Amen. A real good effect? Yeah. And then all of a sudden, somehow, at some point in time, you got it back. Amen. And at some point in time, somebody said how much of a blessing you were. Amen. And suppose you didn't spend that time with God. Mm. Suppose you didn't get in the presence of God. Listen, you wouldn't have gotten anything, and somebody else probably wouldn't have got their life saved. Amen. Somebody might not have got their soul saved. Listen, Amen. you don't know what can happen from what God puts on the inside of you and what you Amen. put out. And so he said, listen, this will be taught. Listen, take it inside of your heart. You don't forget it, but you're going to take it and pass it down to your sons and your sons. Listen, this is what's going to help to deliver even generations possibly. So something that God wants to do with you right now, something that God wants to sell inside of your soul right now could be the very thing that levels out things in your home. Amen. Could be the yeah. very things that levels out things really in the relationship that you have. And so a lot of things probably aren't where they are or aren't where they should be because of something that you've forgotten about God. Mm. And possibly there's somebody, this is not always the case, but possibly there's somebody that might not be listening to you because you might not have listened to God. Amen. There's somebody that might not really be subject to you and the authority and the law that you have because you haven't subjected yourself to God's law and to his authority. And so the time that we spend, listen, remembering God's law, being diligent in our heart in the things of God, taking God's wisdom, remembering his statutes, remembering his judgments, remembering all the things of God to be the very thing that's needed to put a good load on somebody else. Amen. Because, listen, the time that you spend with God is where you're going to get the punch and the power and your message for God. Amen. And there are a lot of things right now that a lot of people are doing really with a lot of empty, vain progress. Because there's been no time with God. And so keep in mind that really, you might have a good this, you might have a good that, you might be the most talented person, but if there's no time taking in things of God, if there's no power in it, really the program won't work at all. The system won't work at all because there's been no presence. And so therefore, really the influence that's needed really won't have any kind of weight. He says, take heed, keep thy soul diligent. That's the warning. Making sure you don't forget that worked back then, it works now, it'll continue to work. Making sure that you absolutely remember where you came from and what it is that God did. And look a little further and watch this. He says, especially the day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in horror, when the Lord said unto me, gather me the people together and I will make them hear my words that they may learn to fear me all the days that they live upon the earth and that they may teach their children. Now watch this in verse 11 very carefully. And he came near and stood under the mountain, and the mountain burned with fire. Unto the midst of the heaven, with darkness, clouds, and thick, thick darkness. And the Lord spake unto you out of the midst of the fire. Ye heard the voice of the words, but saw no similitude. That means image. Only he heard a voice. Amen. Here's God speaking again. Here's the presence of God again. Just like God spoke through the burning bush. Here he is now. These people at the mountainside, they couldn't go but so far. Most going to go far, but really, they still really got the presence of God. 
Moses at that time got the Ten Commandments from God and they got the word spoken. They got God's will. They felt God's presence. They heard God's voice. They were in the presence of God. And so what Moses is making clear, listen, don't forget that back there. Amen. Don't forget how it is that God spoke. Don't forget how it is you got God's presence because God's the only one that can make that happen. And listen, when you talk about fire, you're talking about control. Sovereignty, authority, you're talking about God's presence, you're talking about his protection, you're talking about possibly his judgment, but at the same time, listen, you're talking about a miracle that only comes from God. Amen. You're talking about, listen, fire and a bush that's not being concerned. Amen. You're talking about this fire on this mountain and things like this and a voice coming through it, but you're seeing nothing. Listen, this is a miracle from God, so Amen. keep this in mind right now. When he, talk, listen, when he talks about remembering God, what you're doing is, as even as far as fire is concerned, listen, you're remembering God's absolute presence. You're remembering God's protection. You're remembering God's provision. You're remembering his will, and you're remembering a miracle. So watch this very carefully. There was a time in your life where you experienced a miracle from God, where you yeah. absolutely needed the protection of God, yeah. the presence of God that nobody else could give you. Right. And there was something that God did that nothing else could absolutely do. And it was at a critical time in your life when you really absolutely needed it. And God gave it. And that, listen, there were certain things that could have happened in your life that didn't happen. And God showed up. He showed his presence. And what did you get? You got, the, listen, you got the nature of God, the character of God, the sovereignty of God, the authority of God over everything that was bothering you, over everything that was troubling you. You got the promise of God's protection. You got a miracle in your life, and you got absolutely, totally, 100% God. Amen. Now, how could you forget about that day? How could you forget about that time when God just showed up? How could you forget about that time when really you found out who you were in the presence of God? Where God answered every single question that you had at that time. Where God showed himself strong, God declared who he was, and he declared his authority over every devil in your life. Amen. That's something that has to be remembered. That's the very thing that Moses is telling him, listen, don't forget that time. Amen. Moses could speak on that from experience because that's where he was at the burning bush. And all that time now, up until that time, listen, he's getting that presence in that time really with God at that fire, at that mountain. At that time, they're feeling God's presence. Listen, that's something to be remembered throughout all times. Amen. Amen. And all ages, and something that should never drift away from it. Right. You should never drift away from that. Because the question is, listen, if you get away from something that powerful, something that great, something that miraculous, you want to tell me what it is you're going to? Mm. You want to tell me where you've seen anything else even close to that? Mm. And so you see why God is so sensitive about really? His people remembering who he is, Amen. what he'll do, and all that he has in store. And that's why this is very important, especially even in the times of prosperity. Now, I want you to look a little closer. And uh, he makes this real clear. He says, look at what happens, verse 13. And he declared unto you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform, even ten commandments. And he wrote them upon two tables of stone. Now, I want you to see, let's go a little further. That, that was written on the tablets and things like that. But everything I'm saying uh, is very practical to how we ought to do it right now. Now, Amen. although that was the presence of God, that was the direction of God and the will of God and all those things and the power and the miracles of God and all those uh, uh, instructions from God given in the Ten Commandments, all that stuff is to be written in your heart. Amen. All that stuff, listen, all that stuff, is really, listen, if it's really absolutely going to be totally remembered, it's going to have to be sealed inside of your heart. Now the only way you're really going to do it is through a life of obedience to God. And look at what he, look at what he says. He says in verse 14, And the Lord commanded me at that time to teach you statutes and judgments that ye might do them in the land whither ye go over to possess it. You see that? Amen. So all that stuff you didn't get, listen, all those spiritual classes and things you didn't get for nothing. Uh, you got free training on just how you're supposed to act and behave when you get into a place of prosperity. And the truth be told, a lot of things get held from people simply because you don't know how to act. Amen. And there are people that don't have certain things because you just can't handle it. And so listen, at now, at this point, at this time, where there might be some wandering and things like that, it's the time to get it right. And the most critical time is at this curve of change, right where they are right now. Keep in mind, once again, that at this point in Deuteronomy, listen, they're about to go into the promised land. And so God has given them some refresher courses. 
And God is showing them this stuff over and over again. He's showing them just what to do because it's very, very, very important that you take the right mindset into the promised land. Amen. Otherwise, Amen. what's going to happen is that promised land is going to become a place of torture. Mm. And that promised land can be your burial ground. And so God wants to make totally sure when things are getting ready to go well, that you make sure that you remember good and well what it is that I've done. Amen. And who it is that I am. And so look at what he says in verse 15. Now Moses is about to give a strong warning against the very thing that people get wrapped up in in times of prosperity. And that is idolatry. Set this, allowing other gods to set up in your life alongside God is not above God. And so he gives a warning. Watch what he says in verse 15. He says, watch this. Take ye therefore good heed unto yourself. And remember we said that taking heed to yourself, just watching yourself. Yeah. Making sure you keep on top of yourself. Making sure you watch your habits, your mindsets, the things you indulge in, the things you think about everything. The things you touch, hear, see, all the things your senses can do, watch it. Make sure you be careful that you understand what God feels about it, how he sees it, and his authority over it. Making sure you submit to God in all of his ways, and don't forget his laws, and don't forget his word, because that's the only way you're going to be able to really, truly take heed to yourself. Look at what he says. He says, For you saw no manner of similitude in the day that the Lord spake unto you in Horeb out of the midst of the fire. You see how Moses keeps reiterating this? Amen. You see how he keeps telling them to remember that fire? Because that's the place where you've got God's law. Yeah. That's the place where you found out about the presence of God, you saw the miracle of God, and where you knew just what it was that God required. And so it's very important that the same thing you heard back then that you remember right now when you go in. And it's a very big temptation that when things start to turn around, now watch this, when things start to change for the better, when things start to come out of the worst, when you start to get ready to go into the blessing, that you start to get amnesia about the things of God. You start to forget about God. You start to focus on all these other things and get real busy and get real wrapped up and get real sewn up. And bottom line is you get into a card web of sin and forget all about God. And so he said, listen, remember what it is that God requires because God don't stop. God don't change. If he required it back then, he requires it now. Amen. Listen, if he required holiness back then, if he required worship back then, and he required you to get in his presence back then, listen, he requires it right now. And just because things are changing, just because things are getting better, doesn't mean that Satan's going to slap up. Amen. In fact, he's going to turn up the heat. He's going to make it a whole lot worse. And so that's where you're really going to need me to overcome temptation. You've got to remember what it is that I said. Amen. And there are times where God will give you courses. He'll give you certain things that he'll show you before you get in. Amen. It's very important that you listen. Before things change. Before things get better, that you know that God's law doesn't change. Right. And so, look at what he says. He says, watch this. What will happen as a result of it. And I love how God always gives the warning and he shows you what will happen if you don't listen. He tells you to listen and uh, obedience brings blessings, but he tells you what will happen as a result of disobedience. Right. And so, God does that out of love. He says, lest ye, verse 16, lest ye corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image, the similitude of any figure, likeness of male or female, the likeness of any beast that is on the earth, the likeness of any winged fowl that fly in the air, the likeness of anything that creepeth on the ground, the likeness of any fish that is in the waters beneath, and lest thou lift up thine eyes to heaven, and when thou seest the sun and the moon and the stars and even the hosts of heaven, shouldest be driven to worship them and serve them. You see how easy that is? Now, somebody might say, I would never do that. You want to bet? You start forgetting about God, and I guarantee you're going to be open to a whole lot of other things that you're going to set up as being gods, even yourself. Amen. He says, which the Lord thy God hath divided unto all nations under the whole heaven. But the Lord hath taken you and brought you forth out of the iron furnace. You see that? Amen. So I brought you from the fire, and I showed you what the true fire is. Amen. I brought, listen, I brought you out of that where you were about to get burnt up completely. So remember how you was being cooked. And that, look, look back in your life and look at just how you were being used. You were being tripped and flipped and thrown all over the place, weren't you? Amen. Think about a time in your life, and think about this very carefully. A time in your life where all kinds of heat was coming your way. Didn't seem like God was around, no friend was around, you were just in it. I mean, you were in dire straits and it just got hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter. And before it got too hot, before you got scorched, what happened? God came in. Amen. 
And he set you free. And he, listen, he, listen, he did the things that you needed miraculously. And he brought you out. He brought you through. And listen, he brought you in his presence. Listen, these are the things that are to be held in top priority in our lives. Constantly, over and over and over again. This is what I was. This is what he brought me from. This is what could have happened. This is what's happening now. This is probably what should have happened. But because of God's grace, because of his mercy, because of his love, listen, he brought me out. And he brought me into his presence and he kept me and he sustained me. That's to never be forgotten. Amen. At the same time, he gave me a promise. Even when I drifted, even when I feared, even when I doubted, even when I was anxious, even when I forgot about God, and even when I got into some more stuff, even when I got into all kinds of other things, when I was just spinning around and around and around in circles, he never stopped being God. Amen. He kept his promise to me and really he sustained me at the end of that and now he's keeping me. Amen. And now I'm left over, and now I'm about to go in there, and now I'm about to get things right. Mm. And now things are about to get set up for me. And listen, how in the world can I forget about that and give credit to anything else other than God? Mm. Some people didn't make it. Some people wanted and wanted and wanted and died. And I'm still here. I could have listened to all that stuff. I could have obeyed all those other things. I could have followed that stuff, but I'm still here. And God has kept me. Listen, that's the very thing that needs to be absolutely remembered, how hot it was. And what God could have done to me. Amen. He could have burnt me to he could have ripped me to shreds, but in his Amen. love he didn't. He kept me. Amen. He listen, sent forth a miracle in my life and he sustained me. He listen, gave me all the protection, all the leading and the guiding, and all the presence and the direction that he could give me. And that's guiding me right now into the very promise that he set forth, even to my forefather. Now Amen. you want to tell me how you can forget about that and serve something else, but I want to tell you there are people that do. And there are people that are doing it right now, and they've completely forgotten about God. Let me tell you something else. There are things that's about to change for the better in people's lives, and they're on the verge of forgetting about the Lord. Mm -hmm. And all that God did, and how he kept, and how he sustained, and how he fed you, and all the stuff he brought you from, I'm going to tell you, that's a dangerous mindset to have. Amen. And that is something right now that Satan is dumping as far as poison in the souls and the hearts of people to totally forget about God. And But he gives this warning, and look at what he says. He says, furthermore, watch this. Furthermore, verse 21, the Lord was angry with me for your sakes and swear that I should not go over Jordan and that I should not go into the good land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance, but I must die in this land. I must not go over to Jordan, but ye shall go over and possess that good land. And he tells him again in verse 23, take heed unto yourselves lest ye forget the covenant, that is the agreement that God made, of the Lord your God, which he made with you, and make you a graven image or the likeness of anything which the Lord thy God hath forbidden. Amen. Verse 24, for the Lord thy God is a consuming fire, mm -hmm. even a jealous God. Amen. God is not having it, not one single bit. Take your Bible and close, and I want to look at this. Go to Revelation chapter 2. And I want to look at it, I want you to see at how even in these last days and time now to come, how God's mindset on that has not changed. And how the same God that won't tolerate idols back then or anything else in this place back then won't tolerate it now. And this is where we are. And this is the time of um, the final time just before the Lord Jesus Christ comes back. And what you want to see is uh, Jesus Christ uh, and giving a revelation to the Apostle John while he was on the Isle of Patmos. And this is a strong warning. First starting to the churches and the church age now. And uh, this is something that's going to need to be held uh, all throughout the ages, all throughout the tribulation period, is that God is God and God is in charge and there will be no other gods before him. I want you to look at chapter 2. Well, first look at, hold at chapter 2, but look at chapter 1, and I want you to see something. This is a vision of the Lord Jesus Christ that John gives. And uh, Jesus starts in verse 11 by making it clear that I'm the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. What thou seest, write in a book, and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. Now, look at verse 12 in chapter 1, first before we get to uh, chapter 2. The Bible says, And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. Now watch this very carefully now. This is Lord Jesus Christ uh, that is being given to John in his vision. 
clothed with a garment down to the foot and girt about with the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet, watch this, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. That indicates God, Lord Jesus Christ, executing judgment. Yeah. And uh, watch this. And he had in his right hand seven stars. Now, before you see the Lord Jesus Christ, and you see that uh, imagery of the Lord Jesus Christ that was given, and really that's God in the fullness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything, the presence of God, the protection of God, the sovereignty of God, the guidance of God, the will of God, the absolute instruction, direction from God, the beauty of God, the majesty of God, and the judgment of God, all wrapped up in one. His name is Jesus Christ. And that's what John saw right here. And look at what happens in verse 16. And he, watch this, and he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth Watch this, as the sun shineth in his strength. Now, keep in mind this, and go all the way back to the burning bush, and stretch it all the way down to now, and see how it all culminates, and how it all comes together. Verse 17, and when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying, watch this, unto me, fear not. I am the first and the last. Now this is the same voice that spoke at the burning bush saying, I am that I am. Amen. It's the very same thing. Now look at this. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. And he goes on to say, Jesus, the mystery of the seven stars which thou seest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. And so this message is a message of warning about to go out to this whole region in Asia Minor right there to these seven churches in particular. Amen. And all of this summarizes the problems that Jesus has with the church in general, with the body of Christ. And so this was given to uh, the Apostle John back then, but of course we can read it right now and look at certain things. Let me tell you what it's designed to do. This is designed to really for the church to check herself. Amen. Amen. Everybody in the church to really make sure that you're doing what's needed because really the Lord Jesus Christ is about to return. Amen. And this is set forth right now before the tribulation period. So at some point there's the rapture. And at the end of the tribulation period, the Lord Jesus Christ is going to come back and set up the millennial reign. And so right now here's this strong warning given to the church and this is given to the pastor who has a responsibility for the church at the same time. And so this is a very strict warning. This is a very good warning. It's encouragement, but it's warning at the same time. Amen. Just like it was back then. The, just the same thing that was given to Moses. Is take heed to yourself yeah. and make sure that you listen. Because the time is drawing near. Basically, what's about to happen is you're about to go in. So right now, the rapture is about to take place of what uh, Jesus is saying is, in a nutshell, look, I'm about to come back. You're about to get the promise. You're about to go into the heavenly realm. Amen. Yeah. You're about to go into eternity. So watch it. Yeah. Watch yourself. And so although these words that Jesus is about to give to all these churches, I don't have time to read every one of them. I'm going to look at just this one in a minute. But although these words are very sharp, they'll be taking heed. Amen. There's no time to be getting all offended. Just make sure you listen. So if there's something that is not cutting you down, it's something that needs surgery. You need to get cut on and cut up. So if things can get stitched and re-stitched and reconnected back together again, because some stuff is just malfunctioning. Amen. And there's some stuff that just don't work. And so although really it's set up the way it ought to be set up, there's a gavel stick and all those kind of things like this, but something, something come along. Mm -hmm. It's blowing it out. This thing is going down. This fire's going out. And so what happened is, now listen, Jesus Christ is giving this right now to kind of rekindle that fire. Yeah. Let's make sure that this candle don't get blown out. Amen. And so this is a real good one that Jesus is giving. Look at what he gives to this church. It's the first one, this church at Ephesus. Now watch this. Look at what Jesus says uh, in verse 1 in chapter 2. The Bible says, unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, these things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Now look at what he says right now. 
Now, Jesus is about to point out some good things, but then he's about to point out something that's desperately wrong. And so uh, Jesus is about to do some surgery on this particular branch right here. Look at what he says. He says, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not and has found them to be liars and has borne and has patience and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. Now somebody might say, well, that's good enough, isn't it? And that's all I've got to be. Well, I'm a pretty good Christian. If I've done all those things, I got it made. Well, no, there could be something lacking. There could be, listen, there could be something that's absolutely missing. I want to tell you, there's always something that's missing. And this is the reason why we ought to make sure we do this heart check. This is the reason why we ought to make sure this fire is still burning because stuff starts to go down. Listen, at some point, some cold air starts to come by. And Satan's always trying to blow something on your fire. They kind of try to blow it out. And so that's why we got to make sure that we keep it up and make sure we keep it lit because even just the slightest, smallest thing can set you at odds where God is concerned, Amen. can get you all tracking. All Satan needs is that one little loophole, yeah. that one little thing to get your fire out. All he needs is that one little area of misplacement. Listen, all he needs is that one little area where you take your flame, you take your candle and put it somewhere where it ought not be. Mm. And somewhere that'll take it and blow it right on out. It's all it takes just one. It's, you don't even have to go far. It don't take miles to get away from it. It could just be in one particular zone, over in a corner somewhere, or under something somewhere that can put it right on out. Yeah. And how many times have people taken their candle and put it right under a bushel? And even hidden it. And even something that's taking place really that's taking and putting it right on out. One little thing. Look at what Jesus says. Now somebody might say, well, here's Jesus being a critic and he's uh, criticizing and uh, he's complaining and things like this. Jesus got every right to criticize. Amen. Right. Because he wants to make sure we've got the right relationship that we need to have with him. And he cares about us just that much. And Amen. all the things that he delivered us from and brought us out of and stuff like that showed his love and his care. And his desire to sustain us now and make sure you don't mess up shows his care even more. Amen. And that's why any godly person that cares about the souls of people ought not have a problem with telling you something that's needed to correct you. Amen. And Amen. telling you something that's needed to set you straight. Amen. Not always just pray to keep in mind honor is good and things like that. Listen, you want somebody that's going to point out something that really where they see you going in the wrong direction. That might be one little thing. You might, listen, you might be doing all kinds of other things right. You might be doing 99 things right. But listen, it could be that one thing that could set you right on track and get you in all kinds of trouble. So somebody that really cares about you, that's guided by the Holy Spirit, somebody that's preaching and teaching God's word and things like that, somebody that really cares about you enough to really tell you what does save the Lord and set you in the right direction. Listen, that's something that you want to take heed to. And here's the absolute chief shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ, showing us the very thing he has a problem with. Now, he said all those other things that you're doing right. Keep on doing that. Don't stop. Don't slack up. Here's one thing. Look at what he says. Look what Jesus said in verse 4. He says, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Mm. That's the thing that has taken place. He says, you've left your first love. Now, what does that tell me? That tells me at one time there was a falling love. That tells me at one time there was a presence. It also says that there's been a drifter. It also says you've gotten into something else. So the question is, you've gotten from uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, but what is it that you've gone to? You've gone into a whole lot of other things. You've gotten indulged in stuff. And, and, and look at this very carefully. I want you to see this. You don't have to turn to it, but look at it in, in light of that before I go any further into verse 5. Look at this, look at this for a minute. Uh, Matthew 10, 37 says this. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. He that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Romans chapter 8, verse 37 to 39 says this. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 10 says this, For the love of money yep. is the root of all evil. Yeah. So that goes back to the question, now, if we've gotten away from our first love, gotten, listen, gotten away from the Lord Jesus Christ that loved us first, that listen, brought us out of certain things first, 
delivered us first, set forth his presence in our lives first, established a loving relationship with us first. Listen, there's something we've gotten into. Amen. And listen, Matthew chapter 10, verse 37, Romans chapter 8, verse 37 through 39, and 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10 covers really every bit of those things that you can drift to. Amen. Amen. And all the things you've gotten involved in that really take top priority over God. And although, listen, basically something has gotten too big. Something's gotten bigger than God, and something has taken top priority over the presence of God. And so what's got to happen is, listen, we've got to get back to God. Look at what happened. Look at what Jesus says in verse 5. He says, watch this, remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent. Amen. Remember where you fell off. Remember where you got off track. Remember where you got sidetracked. Remember what you've gotten into. Remember all those things like this. And I believe this also includes remembering really the things that God did before and where you got off track. Where did things start to get complicated? Where did you get your focus off? Where did, listen, what grabbed your attention? I'm going to tell you this right now. Regardless of any kind of relationship or whatever, in particular with a man and a woman, a husband and a wife or something like that, I'm going to tell you, one of the most destructive, damaging, hurtful things is for somebody that you really, really love to have something else grab their attention and take their focus off. If something just kind of catch their eye, especially after you've done all that you can do and you've poured out your heart and you've given yourself to them and you've just uh, indulged in them and you've loved them and you've cared for them unconditionally and you've treated them right, you've listened to them, you've protected them, miracles have come through your life. I mean, you've just given to them. And all of a sudden, something just catches their eye, and something in their sight gets the same value as you've got, and things like that. I'm going to tell you, really, I've talked to so many people, it seems like countless people I've counseled with, that has taken place, and they've been just devastated by somebody who's drifted away from their love. And the care that they've given. I'm going to tell you, it will break, break a mother's heart. For after she's just poured out and given herself all the way down through uh, delivery and labor and things like that and helping that child and feeding that child and bailing that child out and protecting them and keeping them and cuddling them in their arms and being with them and going with them in the hospital and this and that and the other and giving them all kinds of provision and money and things like that and all of a sudden they just drift. Amen. Get miles and miles away from all their nurturing and their care and things like that and do the complete of all the things that they put on the inside of them. Amen. Amen. That is a hurtful thing. And how many broken hearts uh, have I dealt with really and listened to where people have been on the verge of all kinds of drastic measures from somebody who has changed their mind about their love and about their care and gone off into something else. And I'm going to tell you, there are small examples. There are other examples, but those are small things compared to the way God feels. Amen. About somebody who has wrapped themselves up into other things and gotten involved in stuff like that and really they've forgotten all about God and indulged themselves in all kinds of other things that they've held up as being God. Look at this warning that Jesus gives. He says, remember from whence thou art fallen. So basically what that says is, that listen, if you've forgotten about your first love, you've gotten away from God, you've got all these other lovers and things like that, you're in a fallen state. Amen. It's, it's not the same as it was before. It's not like it was before. And, and although you might feel good, things might look good, you're falling. And you're falling away. And that's the very thing that's happening now. And listen, it's sad to say that Satan is getting people in by the trailer loads now with this apostasy. This is the time when they're falling away. Listen, this is a time where people are drifting away from the truth. Yeah. Drifting away from the faith. The things that you heard before, the things that you professed before, people are getting miles and miles and miles away. Way away from the things that they know to be true. Amen. And I want to tell you, this is a warning right now. It's the same one that Jesus is giving now by the Holy Spirit. Listen, you could be on the verge of that right now. Let me tell you, it starts real small. It starts with one little episode. That's all it takes. One little hit to get you hooked. That's all it requires. Amen. To get you indulged. And the next thing you know, you're in this and you're in that and you're in the other. Now you don't have time for God. I want to ask you, how much time do you have for God? How much time have you been spending with God or have, you, or, listen, or have you been asking God to share his time with all kinds of other things? God, listen, possibly God doesn't want everybody in that room with you. Then you got to find some time to get alone with God. And get by that quiet fireplace with God. And all kinds of people might be complaining and say, well, all kinds of things are a mess. They need my time. They need my attention. Listen, you're not going to know what to give it if you don't spend time with God. Amen. 
Your influence will be greater upon other people, possibly even one close to you, if you spend that time with God. Sometimes you just got to get away. Some things you may have to just say no to. I don't mean getting religious and self-righteous and all that stuff, but listen, there's a time that you may have to take. Notice I say you have to take this time. Listen, we don't have time. God owns all time. And so we got to make sure that we really get that time that's necessary. Give God that time that he requires. You just keep on going and let your gas run out and let your oil get all the way down and I can guarantee you what will happen. Your car is just going to stop. It's going to quit. I don't care how it looks. It's going to stop all of a sudden. You better put gas in it. You're not going too much further. Amen. Same thing. Amen. If you and I don't fill up with the presence of God, the Holy Spirit, giving us the direction that we need, giving us the insight that we need, giving us all this to refuel us with what it is that we need, we're going to be a very little influence. We're going to be a very little effectiveness. And possibly right now your effectiveness has been hampered and suffocated by your lack of time with God. Amen. And what God is saying is, listen, you're falling away from me. And somebody might say, well, no, I'm coming to church. I'm getting up. I'm doing this and that and the other. I'm doing all these kind of busy things. But listen, you might have the same kind of attitude that Martha had. You may have to get the same kind of attitude that Mary had whereby she got down to Jesus' feet. And what did Jesus say? She's got the most important part. That's right. Amen. And Martha did all kinds of things, and she wasn't necessarily doing things sinful. But listen, she, listen, she wasn't doing the very thing that needed to be done. Amen. Which was treat Jesus like he needed to be treated inside of her life. And get at his feet like Mary had gotten. Listen, there's a time right now where you and I at this curve of change. This is very important because things are about to change where you recognize who God is, where you take a refreshing course of what God has done, what he's brought you from. I don't care if it was 30, 40, 50 years ago. Listen, the Holy Spirit will remind you Amen. about where you came from and about all that God has done. Take an inventory. Let God reestablish some dates in your life and some times. Take a calendar. Take a time to just listen to God about how he brought you through and Amen. what he brought you from and things he separated you from and things he brought you into. I can guarantee you, you're in a position in a place of blessing right now. You didn't get there without God. Amen. Amen. And God will remind you how really you didn't get there without him and how you're not going no further without him. That's right. That's right. And the only way you're going to be sustained is with him. You got to get before God like a child and remember what God has done because Satan will try to tell you all kinds of things that he will do and make you all kinds of promises that he's not going to fall through with. Amen. Amen. But God will always make his promises real. I'm going to close with this. Jesus says he gives a solution. Remember from whence thou art fallen and repent. That is, change your ways, change your mindset, change your, basically repentance, change your direction. Get away from those things. Make sure you, listen, get back to God. Spend your quiet time with God. I would do it on a daily basis. I would take that time no matter where you go. You just get along with God. Even if it's just about five or ten minutes. That could be the most important five or ten minutes. That could affect the next five or ten days. Possibly the next five or ten years in your life. Just that short time with God that you spend going to God, really, that quality substance time. Let me tell you what somebody's asking for when they ask you for more time. They're asking for a moment. Good quality moments. They don't want you to throw them some scraps or some leftovers and things like that. Listen, how would you like to go into a restaurant or somewhere and order something and you want the best and they just throw you a pan for it now and they just throw you some scraps and that's it. Wow. Amen. Well, I can guarantee you don't want that from God and God doesn't give you that. Well, I can tell you in turn, God doesn't want that from us. Amen. Well, God, I'll give it to you and throw you some scraps. You're talking about God Almighty. Amen. Who owns the stuff that you throw in. And you just want to give it to him just a little bit, and we have the nerve. We got to make sure we give God what's rightfully his. He says, repent, and watch this, do the first works. There's some stuff, listen, there's some basic stuff we got to get back to. At some point, things have gotten real, probably too sophisticated. And a little too complicated. You know why? Because all those ingredients, there's a lot of things that we've souped up to add all kinds of spice to stuff that never, God really didn't even intend to be that way. Some stuff is too spicy. It's too hot. God is saying, tone it down a Amen. bit. Take your spice out of it. It's just too many ingredients. It's burning people's mouths. It's making people sick. Let the heat be the fire that I put on it. That won't necessarily consume, but will bring about miracles, Amen. bring about healing, bring about deliverance, bring about protection. The fire that God gives to cook something and make something is the best fire it can ever be. We got to get back to that. He said, listen, 
go and do thy first works. That means get back to the main ingredients, get back to the basics of cooking, get back to the way to, listen, get back to the original recipe. And let me do it the way that I need to do it in your life. Amen. There are some people that have gotten real raw and you need to be cooked again. Amen. And over and over again. And you know the greatest thing about it? You know the biggest miracle? Is that you haven't really gotten totally stale to the point where you're useless. God has kept you all this time and you're still good enough to be used by God. We just got to get on God's grill, get on God's oven, get on God's stove, and let God do it. Let, listen, let the master shift. Amen. Cook it up the way he wants to cook it up. And do with it what he wants to do with it. Look at what he says. Do the first works, or else I will come. Now watch this now. This is a faithful promise, and this is what will make us do this very thing. Or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. Amen. Nobody wants to see that happen. Amen. That means I'm taking that fire, I'm putting it right on out. Amen. You don't want, God, listen, you don't want the fire department from heaven to come along and put something out of it. Mm. No. We want to make sure that we have the right kind of fire. Amen. Burn on the inside of our lives. The one that won't burn our houses down, but the ones that will build it up. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.
about the decision about him and have given all their sins to him and have their sins cleansed through repentance. So I want to ask you this.